Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Another episode of Hate Line here for you. First of all, just want to say thank you. It seems like you guys really enjoyed the previous upload, the skate park review, so I'll definitely try to get another one of those in. Um, but I need my man Wesley, so it's not like I can just sit down in front of my webcam and make a video whenever I want. I gotta coordinate with Wesley. He's a very busy and successful videographer. He's got many, many clients. I'm just one that he has to fit into his busy, busy schedule. So we'll see if we can get another one done next week, but we'll definitely do more of those and uh, we'll try to get the microphone upgraded as well. Cheers. Anyway, for hate line here, we're gonna start off with this Burberryary story. Burberryary, you know, he's a skater that I have despised for a while now. Um, I've always thought he was a little turd, and this has just confirmed all of my suspicions about him. Let's take a look. Why would you wanna do that? Why would you wanna be a fucking low-life skater that literally gets paid $500 a month? Bro, look guys, I'm not trying to be cocky here. I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to get all crazy here, but if you guys fucking knew how much money I make, so, sorry about the stupid-ass little edit here. I had to pull this from TikTok. Uh, it was the only place I could find it. But, um, <clears throat> essentially, you know, the important thing to gather from this is Burberry Airy says, Why would I want to be a fucking low-life skateboarder who makes $500 a month? Burberry Airy is referring to, you know, broke professional skateboarders. The issue with that is, you know, had these individuals that got into skateboarding, who love skateboarding, uh, and did it even when the financial compensation wasn't there, and they sacrificed the best years of their life and their bodies to skateboarding because they loved it, and they cared about it, and they wanted the scene to grow, uh, Burberry Airy just happens to exist as this disgusting little cockroach of the internet that is able to hijack skateboarding and leverage into something that is profitable for him. The ignorance and the stupidity to speak down upon those people who have put in the groundwork where it's possible and it's as recognized and as appreciated by the public and by, by the layman to where, you know, designer brands like JaVinci or fucking Versace or whoever is sending you your stuff that you wear in your Instagram videos, they're the ones who put you in a position where you can make money off of this, where it's profitable for you. Um, so he's ungrateful and he's ignorant and he's a scumbag. As far as I'm concerned, Burberry is a leech. All these companies, like these these designer companies like Versace and shit, they just use Burberry Airy as a way of, of, of marketing. That's it. They don't have anything to do with skateboarding. They don't give back to skateboarding in a meaningful way. They don't have a vested interest in growing the skateboarding scene or any shit like that. I like how he acts like these shoes are new, by the way, as well, where you can clearly see there's guff marks on them. He's already skated them. You go on any one of his posts and the people that are fucking commenting flame emojis and shit or Brandon Hudson, all these like C-tier celebrities who have like a very vague understanding of skateboarding and they see the shit and they also think it's cool. It's those, you know, clueless celebrities as well as 14 year olds whose brains haven't fully developed yet. They really fuel Burberry Airy. That's his fan base. The type of people who would say, oh, you don't like Burberry Airy? You're just jealous because he has more money than you. As if that fucking meant anything. I wouldn't trade places with Burberry Airy for a million trillion thousand dollars. I really could give a fuck how much money he has. Burberry Airy is an idiot and he's an ignorant asshole and he always will be. Money is not going to change that. So I'd much rather be me than Burberry Airy. So if you're one of those dumbass kids, it's like, oh, you only mad at Burberry Airy because he's making more money than you. No, please get real. Burberry Airy treats skateboarding the same way that he treats punk culture. And that is that he just steals for his own financial gain. He just takes this Sex Pistols logo uh, and, and puts his own logo on, on top of it. Some of you might be aware we already had the situation with Alice Glass where he was using her photo to promote his shirt, just shamelessly hijacking other people's likeness to sell his own stupid t-shirt. Um, and he got into this exchange with Alice Glass where he finally, after making a complete ass of himself, agrees to delete it says, okay, I'll delete it. One more thing, you wanna go on a date. But if you go on the Burberry Airy, you know, Teenage Punk's website, he's still using a live set from who I assume is Alex Alice Glass. I can't really tell, I'm not an expert in this, but I think that's her. Regardless of who it is, I mean, still on the background of his stupid ass t-shirt, 
um, with his face on it. That's $48. By the way, can you think of anything less punk rock than selling a t-shirt for $48 fucking dollars? Burberry Airy consistently disregards and disrespects the people um, who built the cultures that he financially profits off of. Um, and, you know, without the skateboard, let's just be honest, uh, you wouldn't be getting very far in the fashion scene as a model, Burberry Airy. You're, uh, you're no peach. You're no Alex Midler. Come review this. Come take a look at Stevie Williams' Gambling Apes NFT. All right, we're going to have a guest review here. What do you think? Well, I think the red means something. Yeah, you think that it's got some, like, underlying message to the color scheme here? Yeah. Well, what I... about the blue one? <laughs> You think that one's a little, like has a different message than the other one? Yeah, because it has the blue. And yeah. He, and then the other one, he's not smiling, but this one, he's oh, has really? a big grin. Holy shit, he's not <laughs> smiling in that one. That does mean something. You want a gambling ape? Mm-hmm. All right, well, if you're good, maybe I'll get you one later. Okay. These are the uh, NFTs that Stevie Williams... <laughs> is uh shilling to his adoring fans guys like i've said a million times if a prof don't buy anything that a professional skateboarder tells you to buy especially financial shit like this is just so obviously a crock of complete horseshit this whole nft thing is like this is not even different from this thing pretty much like it looks like they made these in about four seconds. Any digital artist can shit this out. That's the same. That's like what NFTs are. They use the same template and then just lazily make minor adjustments. <laughs> Looking at this, I mean, you gotta like, at some point it's like survival of the fittest. If you actually are considering spending money on this, you, you know, you might deserve to lose your money a little bit. This is coming from a, a crypto enthusiast, but don't fucking buy NFTs, guys. Just this little lion's horse shit, these things. Um, <laughs> the guy who founded this whole thing just pulled the rug out and dipped with like $2 million. That's what a lot of this, it's a fucking scam. These are all fucking scams. Do not buy any of this shit. <laughs> don't buy these. Don't fucking buy these gambling apes, guys. Just be serious. Uh, speaking of uh, NFT looking sh things, I just thought this was hilarious because this is essentially uh, what these new Plan B graphics look like. They look like NFTs. I guess when you can't uh, afford Sean Cliver, you have to get Sean Coons. <laughs> These are literally NFTs. Which one do you like? Mm, I like the mommy one. You like the Sheckler one? Yeah, I like that one too. Let's go to this poor bastard. Uh, Rita's Karyuma shoes have been completed, so they had to like design a little tiny shoe for his little ass. I don't know what the child protection laws are in Japan, but this has to be some form of exploitation. I love this passive aggressive comment uh, from Karyuma too. The happiest one alive. We wish all skaters had Rita's amazing and positive energy. He doesn't know what planet he's on, obviously. Look into those eyes. There's not much going on back there. As there shouldn't be, he's only four years old. I guess whoever runs this account doesn't have the same stringent censoring policies that Karyuma does. How dare you groom this child into your sick cult? You know, poor Rita. I hope one day he can look back on this and smile. I hope we can all smile when we gather around in a big circle and we watch the Karyuma factory go up in flames and we can sing Kumbaya and he'll be there right with us. You know, at this point, I just gotta say to Karyuma, uh, you guys can sponsor as many four-year-olds as you want. You can give Mike Vallely a pro shoe for some reason. You can keep throwing money into the abyss and trying to shove Karyuma shoes down the throat of the skateboarding community. But it's over. Your fuck-up is irreversible to the point where you have to 
censor the comment section of your posts because everybody fucking hates you guys because you just you blew it you fucking blew your marketing campaign you have a relatively good idea but the management has been so piss poor that there's no coming back from this there's something called a sunk cost fallacy. You've already put so much money into it. You can't just stop. You can't cut your losses and get out. I'm sure you guys are hoping that at some point things are going to turn around and Karyumas are going to be accepted in the skateboarding community. Um, but they're not. Nobody respects your business approach. You know, the fact that you don't let skaters speak freely on Instagram about the products that you're making and you censor everybody and you say, oh, we wish everybody had the same positive mindset as this four-year-old he doesn't even know his own ass from his elbow we wish that all skaters didn't know their ass from their elbow it's never gonna happen you guys fucked up beyond repair and you know my advice to you guys would be to get out you hired steve bear as your skateboarding team manager skateboarding is cool and it's about self-expression and you know you can have opinions and people should be able to speak freely that's you know that's skateboarding and you guys come in with this fucking stupid ass totalitarian attitude where you think skaters need to be told what to do and what to buy and anybody that speaks against you guys has their comments deleted your business strategy is antithetical to skateboarding and you think you're gonna censor skateboarding into submission it's not gonna happen anybody that pulls up to the skate park in these is going to get fucking clowned bruh holy shit who do they have modeling this shirt it looks like he's like standing backwards but forwards at the same time so keen ramps is doing this thing this shirt builds spots you know it really does 100 percent of the proceeds from this t-shirt will go towards purchasing materials to create at keen ramps built street spots the handrail shown on this t-shirt was one that we installed at a perfect eight stair in la county and then invited a bunch of our pro slash am homies to come throw down on it for a chance to win cash give back street spot creations we plan to do as a part guys come on we fucking how many years of of getting this word wrong are we gonna live through it's a part this means the opposite i don't mean to be that guy but at this point it's like you're fucking running an official account can we get a grammar check okay so this is the the handrail that they installed. It brings up an interesting skateboarding ethical quandary. Is this spot legit? If you were to go out and film a trick on this spot, would you be allowed to put that in a video part? Personally, I'm thinking no. I think that if a spot is installed by skateboarders, like this rail was made with skateboarding involved, then I think it's more like a skate park than it is like a street street spot if you know what i mean street spots are like supposed to be organic the architecture was designed with the intention of just you know being accessible and useful for pedestrians um, when this rail looks pretty out of place if i'm honest designed to be used by skateboarders and i think if it's designed to be used for skateboarders then it doesn't count as you know being in a street spot that's why you know there's sort of some hesitation and like you know, stipulations about to what extent is bondoing and spot fixing, you know, how much of that is allowed. I think I got to draw the line here with, uh, with installing a handrail at a stair set, which to me looks, you know, this looks very Barra-esque. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not cool. I think this is a cool idea. And, you know, if I lived next to this thing, I might toss a couple front boards down it or something. Um, it's a good place to practice. Let's go to our last thing here, which is Crux has made these trucks that say racism on the bottom of them. And, uh, you know, I suppose the idea is to grind on the bottom where it says racism. And some people kind of have their, their knickers in a twist, their panties in a, a bit of a twist over this. But I think it's kind of funny. Grind out racism. So, you know, it's a metaphor. Trucks with proceeds going directly to Color of Change buy a set and support the movement and practices and systems that unfairly hold black people back and champion solutions that move us all forward. So, you know, I, I have no problem with this. A, a lot of people sent this to me, you know, asking for my take on it. I don't see the issue. Uh, it's pretty clever and it's kind of comedic as well. So I don't mind it at all. Uh, I'd personally, I wouldn't mind grinding out some racism myself. Crux, send me these uh, racism trucks. Let me uh, take them for a spin so I can grind out the uh, the racism with the uh, front crooks that I've just learned. Take this racism. I want to front crook racism into extinction. All right, uh, that's going to do it, guys. 
thank you all for watching. I love you all. Appreciate you all. I'll see you all next week. And uh, everybody enjoy your weekend. Sending my love.